Okay, check. Yeah, to the, so we just um, give it the yeah, to our viewers, if you are listening to us, you can share your excitement about the event and the talks on Twitter using the hashtag, hashtag Africa. Let's buzz and let everyone be aware of the awesome content we are getting to do. So over to you, Ahmed, if you're ready. Okay, uh, let me share my screen. Okay. Okay, are we good? Yep. All right. Hi, good morning, everyone. I, my name is uh, Ahmed Abdelaziz. Again, I'll be presenting our optimizing uh, MongoDB query uh, performance, right? So who am I? Okay, I'm Ahmed Abdelaziz, a tech lead uh, at uh, Druv uh, Limited. I'm a co-lead for Facebook Developer Cycle. I'm passionate about uh, community building, because community has actually been everything for me for, for my growth as a software, like, like for, as a software uh, engineer. I kind of like, I love uh, open source. Yeah, open source has actually helped us, like almost all developers, especially for Node.js developer, like it has actually helped us uh, build different things. So my GitHub, you can find actually on Ahmed Abdelaziz, and, uh, sorry, Dev Amaz, and my Twitter is also Dev, um, Dev underscore Amaz. Uh, so the first question is like, okay, why optimize your query? Like, okay, what's, is optimizing query actually mean? So database query are actually very, very expensive, right? Database query are very, very expensive. So now imagine you have a record of millions of users, or let me, let me just say, just like as an example that I actually gave you, like millions of um, a record of pets, right? In your database, and you're actually trying to query a database to scan, like maybe to get a particular uh, category of cards, right? Your, what your database is actually does like, okay, just scan through each record on your uh, database, each record on your database. Then after scanning through all the records, then I kind of now categorize them into uh, cards. That is what you actually try to query for, right? In MongoDB, we actually call this uh, cost scan, right? So the cost scan is actually like kind of your worst case scenario that you can actually get, which is actually not, good because the more your uh, database like kind of grow right the more time is actually going to take for you to be able to get any data back when you so just imagine you're just trying to get a user right and the user is the last person and you're, you're this one so he has like kind of scan through a record a millions of records before actually getting that particular user so you should always like kind of when the more like if your uh, database are actually start growing, you should be thinking of okay, how can you actually start optimizing this? So that's actually why for this talk. So optimizing your your query, there are actually different ways you can optimize a MongoDB query. You can start start thinking of optimizing query from the way you actually model your database from maybe uh, yeah from the way you model your database from uh, you can optimize uh, database with sharing but particularly today right i'll be focusing on optimization with index and which index is actually like it's not only in um, mongodb index is actually in almost like all is like in all database like both no sql database and which is like, for example, MongoDB and SQL database for maybe, let's say, MySQL or Postgres, right? So these are the list of the like, kind of things I'll be talking of under the uh, index, because for index, we actually have a lot of things. We have the index, we have compound index, we have like kind of a cover query, which is that kind of another type of way to optimize with index. We have, um, we have the text search index, we have, then I'll be talking about, okay, you, eliminating some of unnecessary index and using the explain plan. Okay. So the index, right? In the, what index actually helps you to do, right? Index tells your data, like it's kind of a data structure, right? That tells your database that, okay, I'll be querying for this particular thing. Like often, let's say for example now, uh, let me use a user. As a uh, when you have a user on your database, you always maybe if your user will always logging, you know that okay, definitely you have like um, your user always like kind of coming on the app every day to come and log in. So you should think of okay, how can you actually 
uh, tell your database that, okay, yeah, you'll be getting a user maybe by email every day. So it's just like a way of letting your database know that, okay, this, I'll be getting this kind of data. So help me, it, it's actually create a data structure for you to be able to get that, for you to be able to read that user fast from your database. So from what I have here, I say, okay, uh, index are actually data structure that tells your database, I'm going to be querying these attributes and I want it fast. So, which means any, anytime I'm giving this kind of inputs, right, to the database, I want you to like, kind of query it fast. And how it does that, like, okay, now instead of scanning through a, all the, instead of scanning through all the, your record on your database, it's just like, okay, now you're giving it a specific index that, okay, instead of scanning through everything, one by one, scan through only the emails for you to be able to get me uh, this record fast. And one of the like kind of the default for MongoDB, the default index we have for people that actually use MongoDB is the underscore ID. Like the ID in MongoDB is actually the uh, default index. So when you're trying to search anything, you're mostly like kind of okay, you're searching by the ID. That's give you like kind of a default index. We have other index, uh, other um, yeah, index like the unique index. Let's say, for example, just uh, the example I've been using, like the uh, the user creating the user, right? For the user, you have um, email, and you want your email to be unique. Although, it depend on what you're actually building. So, but more, more most time, right? When you're using email as a login, you want your email to be unique because you don't want multiple users, right? To actually have like, uh, sorry, yeah, multiple different users to use same email to as they are logging. So your email should be unique. So that unique that you actually make your email to is still another type of index in MongoDB. So how do you actually create an index? The syntax for creating an index is okay, you have your in the that's the DB, then the uh, the your collection name, which can be actually be users, just like uh, example, then you create uh, create index. So the create index now is the method that I kind of you are passing to your collection. So you pass the field and you pass one. So the one that's the value, the one value that I actually pass here, right? It can be either one or minus one. So which is telling you, okay, it can be either ascending order or descending order, depend on your use case, depend on what you're actually thinking of how to use it. If you want, uh, your, if your use case is descending or your use case is actually ascending order. So that's how to uh, create a index. Like it's very, very simple and straightforward. Uh, to check, so now let, let's say, okay, now you're not sure that, okay, is do you have actually index on a collection? You can check an index with uh, get index. So when you pass the get index into a collection, uh, the method into a collection now, it's actually going to display all the index you have on that particular collection. So that brings us to compound index. A uh, compound index are index uh, comprised of several fields. Let's say, for example, right, you have um, still, let me still use a uh, use, uh, user, I, like I want to use example that will actually flow with everything. So let's say I have a user and the user have a first name and it has a last name, right? Instead of like kind of creating index separately, you can I kind of create you know, like you're, you're trying to even query both names and well. you can write an index that will actually query against both names, which means like, okay, now you you have, and you can have more than, for example, here I actually pass only first name and last name. You can as for compound index, you can have multiple, a stream of, uh, yeah, multiple uh, fields now pass into your compound index. So that means, let's say for example, now in H, yeah, H can actually be passed as an index too, depending on what you're querying, querying for. Although, uh, Later on the slide, I'll be actually be uh, explaining why you should not pass like kind of uh, too much uh, index, uh, why you should not create too much index on your collection. So for create another good scenario, I want to like kind of paint a scenario why uh, you can might actually need a compound index or how you should actually use compound indexes. And let's say for example, right, um, we have schools and we have districts, right? So, we can only have uh, one school. We, yeah, we can have a school with a name. Like, let's say, for example, now I have school A in a district, right? I can have like two school A 
in a particular district, but you can have school A in district one, and you can have school A in district two, but you can have school A, two school A in one district. All right, so that's another example of where you can, so now if you just uh, choose like kind of to index the name of the, if you choose to index the name of the uh, school, which is school A, right, it's going to affect school A in district two. So another thing you can do is to use uh, kind of compound index. So now you, when you're using compound index now, you're kind of saying that, okay, in district one, right, school A. Uh, I hope the, uh, the analogy is a bit clear. So that's another place you can always like kind of use. And when you're using a uh, compound index, that kind of uh, thing, then you should be thinking of, okay, which of the queries is actually larger. So that would be the first, that, that means like, for example, now I have a uh, first name here, your, your district now will come first because it, it has a larger number before then, before the schools. Okay, uh, moving to the next slide then. Uh, another way you can actually optimize your queries uh, with cover query. So cover query are actually query that satisfy the entire, like using the entire index, right? that does not examine any document. What, what is actually simply saying is, okay, let's say for example, now still using your user, user as, a, uh, as a collect, still using your user collection, sorry. Let's say you have a user emails, right? And you, your emails is test at gmail.com. So you can pass another query, another um, object, right? to so your query now saying that, okay, your email should be one because there's actually an index on the email, right? So the email will be one and your ID, because an ID, the ID too, just like what I said, is a default uh, index on your MongoDB. So ID zero. So instead of now your MongoDB now trying to like kind of check index for both user and ID, and you don't actually really need them to check ID at that time, you can just pass that, okay, you want the index to be like kind of check on, on your email so it's more it's more faster for your it's more faster now for your more for your database now to like kind of check the index on your email and get the information you need out for you very fast so that's what uh covered query that means you're okay uh, instead of like kind of running multiple index you just like kind of pass a single index which is the email that you already create an index for. So when you're querying it, you just pass it that, okay, make my email, this uh, the one means, okay, true, then the zero here means actually false for ID. So now your database will not have to like kind of check index for both. And then text search. A text search, my own use case for text search was actually like, okay, you have a text, maybe for example, uh, more of, okay, you're trying to search in your, database yeah you can use regex for this but the problem with regex is you have to like kind of pass the uh regex is case sensitive although yeah it's still depending on how you actually write that so you have to like for you to be able to get like kind of the best out of it, you have to like kind of pass the case sensitivity of index and not even giving case sensitivity when you're passing index in MongoDB actually is one of the things that actually slow your query so for you to get like your data fast out of it, you have to like kind of set the case sensitivity when using regex to search from your database. But MongoDB actually give us something we call the text search. The text search, the text search actually, super, let's say for example, now you have a bio on your user data and you're trying to search for only, let's say the, the word developer inside your user data on a particular feed, the, text search index actually help you to like kind of scan through that particular field and search for a particular word you're trying to look for. So instead of like kind of run, running through all your queries, since you've already, from the example I actually gave here, it's like, okay, you create, you that's the, pass the create index into collection, then you call the field, which means the field I'm passing here is the bio. And the bio, I mean, okay, you should do a text search from here, sorry, I think I have spelling error there. Okay, yeah, but you pass a text search. So now you're telling your database that, okay, I'm going to be searching a text from this particular field, 
bio. So that's actually a text search index. So anytime now from the, uh, from the example, anytime let's say I'm trying to get a search of, okay, who are actually the, who am I user that has maybe developer in their bio, right? MongoDB, will, it will be easy for MongoDB to actually run through users by users bio and said that okay yeah in this uh, sentence or in this like kind of yeah uh, specific uh, in this sentence do we have any any user that has developer in their bio so let's say for example you have like a long sentence definitely when you're writing bio you're writing bio maybe about what you do and everything so it's really easy for the mongodb to just search you everybody and say that okay yeah this particular user has developer in his bio. So test search to actually help you to like kind of uh, query your, uh, your DB first, instead of like having to like write uh, the regex, uh, you have to like kind of figure out the uh, case sensitivity and everything. Uh, next is, uh, now this actually bring me to one thing that I uh, like a lot of, I've actually made a mistake myself, I love, uh, developers that made this mistake is, okay, yeah, index are actually very, very good. Like it makes your query, helps you run your query fast and the rest, but index, the truth is index are, is very, uh, like it's expensive and it's uh, resource intense, like what I say, it's not free, I mean, sorry, it's not free and it's resource intense. Yeah, it helps you write your, it helps you read your query faster, but when writing it's slow and it actually takes the result like, take more space on your both on your ram and on your gigs so if you're not actually using uh any index just don't just say that okay because uh index is very good then you index all your fields on your query that would be like your this one would be super slow because one now you are taking more like for each index you take is taking space on your memory because now it's more like okay reading from memory and I actually for us uh, like index actually use uh, a, a MongoDB index use a bit tree set. So for every index you're creating is taking a memory, right? On your light, on your RAM. So if you create index for all your fields, so at the end of the day, that, that can actually make your database slow instead of being fast. So you should like kind of always check that, okay, sometimes don't even index your database like fast, you should have a use case before you just think of, okay, okay, I can index this. Or until your data is actually grow to some extent, yeah? Before in that, okay, yeah, this is actually a good time for me to index it. But you, you don't, uh, it's not, for me personally though, I don't think it's actually advisable for you to index database. Maybe you are just querying something that is less than maybe 1000 data. Running index on that, I don't think it's actually, it will actually give you any difference. But when you start having like kind of, yeah, 100,000 millions of records, now you can start thinking, okay, now I can actually index. Indexing too early to, uh, might actually still, might not give you what you actually, there won't be any difference. So since there's not any big difference, so there's no need of you, for you to actually index too early. You can just, you can, although you can have that in there, okay, maybe when my records or when my data, Start scale or reaching this particular number, I started thinking of index. Or when you started noticing that, okay, maybe the query, let's say, for example, you benchmark and you know that, okay, this particular query usually take, uh, usually take uh, at least maybe five seconds. Now, nothing, nothing is wrong with your DB, but now maybe your, uh, your uh, yeah, nothing is wrong with your DB on your, your server, but now the query now takes maybe 10 seconds. What usually takes 15, then you can start thinking, okay, now maybe you have a data for your database now to run through all your record. You can start thinking of, okay, how can I actually index this? So indexing too early might not actually give you anything from what your data, what your normal, without any, running database without index will give you, or running query without index will give you. So don't just think of, okay, since index is a very good, it makes my query faster. Let me index all, all my uh, fields on my data. So that's, so for you, for you to be able to check that, okay, what are the index you have 
on a collection, you can do get index and actually still check that, okay, do I really need index here? Do I really need index here? So anywhere you don't, you know that, okay, you have some index you're not using, you can just uh, remove them. So for you to check if, uh, for you to check the indexes on your collection, you can just like kind of pass the name of the collection and the get index method. And the last one is more of like, um, MongoDB give you like kind of a explain plan. So explain plan for what I have here, like working uh, from the explain plan, MongoDB provide visual tools to help further improve understanding the indexes and provide intelligent and automatic recommendation on which index to add. So for MongoDB, right? you can pass uh, the explain method to your query. So when you pass the explain method to your query, although you they have uh, different, uh, this one they actually, parameters they actually take, but here you can use the uh, execution stat. That execution stat actually is give you like kind of, uh, where if you're using the, uh, the MongoDB UI, that's MongoDB compass, right? Is you're going to, when you click on the explain, it's going to give you like the data and everything. You're going to see that. But when you pass this in your CLI, maybe just like, yeah, in your CLI and you pass the, it's going to tell you that, okay, if your, how your database is running the in there, okay, is it, is it call scan, which I just, from what I mentioned the other time, call scan is like kind of the worst case scenario that that means your, the larger, that I think that's long end, right? Log end, because the more your uh, your data grow, right? The more your query like start becoming slow. If your data is hundred, that means it has to scan uh, your record rather. It has to scan through the uh, it's it grows to millions, billions. So with uh, the explain, right, is going to help you to check that okay, this you have index on this query. Do you actually need the index? Yeah. And it's actually going to tell you, okay, now you're using in uh, the search now instead of cost, it's going to tell you the kind of query that's actually on the index. The one, uh, one example is the cost can actually say, which that like kind of the worst case scenario, it's going to give you if you actually have an index search there or if there is an F index kind of stuff. So how that with the explain right is actually going to help you to tell you that, okay, on this particular collection, this uh, on this particular query that you actually run, this is the like kind of the execution statistic. These are it, but these are it as well. And actually, uh, that's the last part. And that's how it actually that I actually think you can optimize your query or the way you can actually think so about optimizing your query when building for when building when yeah when querying MongoDB. Um, Thank you very much. Awesome. Awesome presentation. Sorry, my uh, camera decided to switch to a different mode. Yeah, awesome presentation on Eid Mubarak Ahmed and to everyone. Uh, uh, same to you. Everyone that's celebrating. It's, uh, it's an exciting time. And I have a question here on, in the YouTube chat. It says, uh, there's a lot of people that are already used to SQL, and do you think it's going to be a big mental shift to switch from uh, SQL to uh, MongoDB? And how much of the experience with SQL can be transferred? Hello? Is it, sorry, come in, how much, I lost you when you say how much, what? Yeah, how much of the experience that someone already has with SQL can be transferred to MongoDB? Is it a big mental shift? Uh, for me personally, right, I actually start with, uh, which is a uh, relational database, like my SQL, uh, SQL rather, right? And moving to MongoDB, it's not actually a big mental shift. The only thing that when it's come to... Uh, no SQL, right, is you know that, okay, now, but just like what you said, like no structure, right? Sometimes you just like kind of, now you don't really have to like kind of have pre uh, like, for MongoDB, for SQL, right? You have to structure all your data. 
before like you have to know that okay these are your data actually really going to work and how everything is structured but for no sql which is something like mongodb right you don't really have to have that mental this one ready you can just like okay let me start with this right if the more maybe if your data maybe when you need more fields you can always add the field as to it hello how you together yeah, I can hear you. So you can you can always add the fields now to that particular. So uh, although every I think for MongoDB or for for SQL or no SQL, right? It actually depends on what you're trying to build. More more of the time, like I usually use a uh, no SQL like for startups. So why I say startup is like okay, so startup requirement change all the time. Like it can change anytime. So so sometimes when you don't really like kind of know that okay this is the main structure that you are trying to like kind of build this so you can firstly like kind of okay yeah let me use no sql for this because it allows you to like kind of throw yeah and when i say no sql doesn't mean that okay you don't have structure even though for mongodb for for node.js guys we use like kind of a mongoose right to like kind of structure the way our data are being passed to the this but it's easy for you to like kind of just had more fields had this compared to what uh up. Hello, well, compared to SQL, okay. right? As you map. Yeah. How do you map? So okay. I, I hope that answer your question. Yeah, that's a very great answer. Uh, and I think basically it's uh, more like when you don't have the, your whole structure figured out yet, uh, yeah. no SQL is the best option to, to use so that you can easily evolve uh based on how your requirements change yeah okay awesome thank you very much for your time we don't have any other question in chat so i guess we'll be proceeding to the next uh speaker